Hello everybody, I'm Jerry Ross, the Genie Vlogger, and welcome back to another Professional Genealogist Reacts. On today's video, I will be reacting to my own DNA test results. I've been getting a few comments lately of people asking what are my results, and while I did actually already do a DNA test results video of my own, this was from back in 2017, and the DNA results have changed since then, and I've had my parents also test, so I'm gonna go through my DNA results in this video and my parents' DNA results in this video. Now, I originally tested at Family Tree DNA, and that's actually the only place that I've tested other than another company, which I'll be going over in another video that's outside of the typical ones. It's a whole genome sequence company. But other than testing on Family Tree DNA, I have also uploaded my results to MyHeritage and GEDmatch. Now, the reason why I haven't tested anywhere other than Family Tree DNA is because I have all of the other databases covered with other family members of mine. So both of my parents have also tested on Family Tree DNA, but my mom has also tested on Ancestry, and then my father's sister, my aunt, has also tested on Ancestry. And for me, the admixture stuff really isn't that important. It's the finding relatives. My sister did a test through 23andMe, and I haven't felt any need to do any other tests through 23andMe because they aren't the most helpful when it comes to genealogy stuff, especially with the recent changes they've done. And so there really isn't much of a point in me testing in other databases when I already have people in them. So for today's video, I'll be actually reviewing my results on both Family Tree DNA and my heritage because I have both mine and my parents on both of those databases. So we'll be comparing my results to my parents' results as well. But before we get into all of that, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. It really does help me out. And be sure to click that subscribe button and click that bell for notifications on future videos. Now, before we get into the actual DNA results, let's quickly go through my family tree so that we can get an idea of what we're going to expect from the admixture results. So here we have my family tree on genie.com and I have it in what's known as direct ancestors only. So it shows all of my ancestry, just my direct ancestors. So no other relatives. For my family here, this is my father's side of the family. This is all Ashkenazi Jewish as far as I know, mostly coming from the Pale of Russia. Uh, so this family here, my Goldberg, Goldenberg family, which I've discussed in a video, um, or I guess I've discussed pretty much all of them in, in most of my videos already, but my Goldenberg side comes from a town called Sokarani, which was in Romania. It's now in Ukraine, right on the border of Romania. Um, my great-grandmother Fanny, I'm not quite sure where she comes from, likely an area right close to, or right near there, close to there. My Rosenberg family comes from Germany, but they're Ashkenazi Jewish, so it's doubtful that I'll get any German ancestry. Uh, this branch of my family, the Waxman or Vaxer side and the Reamer side, both of these came from a town called Tolchin, which is in present-day Ukraine. And um, they're also, this is all Ashkenazi Jewish. Now getting to this side, this is my mom's side. And this is where I have a lot of Sephardic ancestry. And so this is where it's going to be interesting for the DNA test to see, can they pick any of this up? So here, starting out, we have all of these Sephardi families, which... As most of them trace back really deep into the Netherlands, so usually about the 1600s. Many of them break off to different areas, so like the Nunes Vaz line came from Italy, and before that we know they came from Portugal or Spain, but we're not quite sure where. Um, a lot of these other families, some of them went through Bordeaux, some of them went through Hamburg, um, a lot of them went just different routes, but this is what's known as the Western Sephardi community. That's one part of my family that's Sephardi. Then we get into the Dutch Ashkenazi side with my Moscow family and this branch of the family. So we're getting a lot of Ashkenazi. And then once we get past that, we have a little bit of right here. You see the Barzilay family. We have a little bit more Sephardi there. But then when we jump over to this part, we have my Epstein family, Silicon family, 
the Epstein's come from Grodno, the Silicon or Silasun, still trying to figure that out. They came from Kishinev. And then all of these families over here came from Kiev, Odessa, Kiev. And then we believe the Skavatskys may have come from Poland, but still kind of that Ashkenazi. So going to my pedigree view, which kind of makes it a little bit easier to look at all of this. We have a quicker view of my ancestral family. So based on most of this, assuming that the DNA test can compare Ashkenazi to Sephardi, which... They can't all, um, only a few do, which my heritage will be one of them. Um, we're going to be expecting just a small percentage of Sephardi and the rest Ashkenazi with some possible European hiding in there, especially in my Sephardi families. There are a few that trace back to European families that we do know that, you know, based on the paper trail, it, it is true. Um, DNA would be another thing that we'd love to confirm with. So since my great-grandfather Morris was the last ancestor where all of the Sephardi comes through him, his father being fully Sephardi and his mother being one-eighth Sephardi, then he's five-eighths Sephardi, which means his son, my grandfather, is five-sixteenths Sephardi, which is just a little under a third. That makes my mom five-thirty-seconds, I don't know how to say that, five out over thirty-two, um... Sephardi and then for me about 5 out of 64 so that would be about 7.8 percent of Sephardi DNA that I should expect so about 8 percent so more than likely if they can pick up on the Sephardi depending on how the recombination happened I could have I would guess somewhere between maybe like 4 percent to it could be as high as like 12 percent if I if the recombination worked out where I inherited a lot of the Sephardi DNA. But with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the DNA results. So here we have my results for family tree DNA. And as you can see, it's really not that interesting. We have 99% Europe and they have it interestingly European Jewish and then broken down Ashkenazi Jewish 99%. And you can see that it's basically covering the typical area that most Ashkenazi Jews come from, um, you know, Eastern Europe, a little bit of Central Europe, uh, but a lot dealing mostly with like the pale of, of Russia. Um, and then I do have 1% Southern Caucasus, which is this little bit right over here. And it's technically not even 1%, it's less than 1%, which means that the 99% is probably like 99.2 or 3 if they were to actually show those fractions. Um, so really not a whole lot that I'm going to learn about through this test. So as we talked about before, I should expect about 8% Sephardi DNA, you know, there is a range and we can see here family tree DNA is not picking up on that. Now I do believe family tree DNA does have Jewish categories outside of just Ashkenazi Jewish. And I believe that it does include Sephardi. So looking in here. Yeah, so they do have Sephardic Jewish, so but they're not picking up on my Sephardic Jewish, assuming that I do have Sephardic Jewish ancestry. But as I said, my parents have tested on family tree DNA, so let's see what their results are. So first, let's look at my dad's family tree DNA admixture. Now, for my dad, we saw the family tree shows 100% Ashkenazi, but there are a lot of missing branches, so this could be somewhat of a surprise for us. So here we have my dad's results, and we can see that there's a lot more going on than in my own results. So he does have 100% European, with 94% being Ashkenazi Jewish, and then he has 6% Italian Peninsula. So very specific, instead of just Southern European, they're saying we have 6% coming from Italy. Now at 6%, it could it makes a lot of sense why I may not have gotten any of that. Um, just because it's 6%, it's a low amount. And if we had the ability to test his parents, then maybe we could see where that 6% is coming from, assuming that it is a true 6% uh, coming from one direct line. There is the possibility that there is European hiding in multiple branches of my dad's ancestry that we just don't know about. But 
assuming that 6% is coming from just one recent ancestor who was fully Italian, 6% would be about a second great-grandparent or maybe a third great-grandparent. So that would be a really interesting thing to figure out if as I'm doing uh, my genealogy and I maybe break through a brick wall in my dad's family and then I find that there's a link to Italy, then this admixture could be helping point towards that. So that's where the use of this admixture comes in. But there's a lot of possibilities where the 6% is coming from and it may not be just from one recent common Italian ancestor. It could be from multiple bit more distant common ancestors then going on we do have less than one percent middle east and north africa with less than one percent being bedouin and then less than one percent being yemenite jewish so both of those really trace results so now that we've looked at my dad's results let's look at my mom's results so based on the family tree we would expect about 15 percent for my mom's sephardi ancestry and it could be a little less, could be a little bit more, but let's see if Family Tree DNA picks up on it. So here we have the results, and yeah, they're picking up on some of that Sephardic Jewish. But then we see that Southern Europe, she also has Italian Peninsula, 7%, which is really interesting because if she had 7%, my dad had 6%, I didn't have any, then that means that I didn't inherit any Italian from either of my parents. And then from there, we see Middle East and North Africa, Middle East, Sephardic, Jewish, just under 2%. So we we do see that they are picking up on that Sephardic Jewish. Now, is it possible that my mom only inherited 2% of that DNA when we would expect about 15%? Yeah, it's possible. So now that we've looked at the family tree DNA results, let's jump over to my heritage and see what they're picking up because my heritage really boasts about how they can determine different sections of Judaism in your DNA, and especially for those who have Sephardi ancestry. So here we have my results from my heritage, and we can see that this is a lot different than what we had on family tree DNA. For family tree DNA, I was 99% Ashkenazi Jewish, just less than 1% from the Caucasus. Here we have 84.1% Ashkenazi Jewish, 9.9% Sephardic Jewish, which they're defining as North African as well, and then 6% Mizrahi Jewish, which would be Iranian in Iraq. Now, this is really interesting uh, because I don't know of any connection to Mizrahi Jewish. Um, Mizrahi Jewish at 6%, like I said before, with 6%, that would be about a second or third great grandparent. It's very possible that it could I could have Mizrahi Jewish ancestry through my father's side. So when we look at my dad's DNA results in just a second, we'll have to see, does he have Mizrahi Jewish? And even more, does he have more Mizrahi Jewish reading than I do? And if that's the case, then maybe one of those brick walls on my dad's side is a brick wall because it traces to Mizrahi Jewish ancestry, and I've been looking in all the wrong places. But at the same time, this could be just a misread. Now, one of the unfortunate things with my heritage is that they don't release a white paper, which includes a lot of the information behind how they're coming up with these percentages, as well as their precision and recall rates, which I've talked about in a previous video. That's how you basically measure the performance of a DNA test. So that makes it hard to tell how reliable the results can be because sometimes certain population groups may be a lot harder to read than others. So it's possible that for their Mizrahi Jewish uh, population group, they were getting really low precision and recall numbers. Could be that they were getting low precision, high recall, or the other way around. So it's hard to tell exactly you know, what I should expect just because I don't really have numbers to compare it to. But now let's look at my dad's DNA results. Let's see, does he have any of that Mizrahi Jewish reading that my heritage is picking up for me? And does he get any more of that Italian in any way? Southern European, maybe they have a more specific Italian, um, but let's see. So here we have my dad's results, and we have 95.2% Europe, 92% Ashkenazi Jewish, which I'm pretty sure that's exactly what Family Tree DNA had for him. I think it was 92%. 
3.2% Italian. So they did pick up on the Italian a little bit less than they're reading for than Family Tree DNA, but still pretty close. I think Family Tree DNA had 6% for him, 7%. Now here we're getting West Asia Mizrahi Jewish. So we are getting Mizrahi Jewish, but he has less than I do. So if that's the case, then we should expect my mom to pick up Mizrahi Jewish as well. And if that's not the case, then there's something possibly funky going on with the Mizrahi Jewish population group. Um, and then for the last 2%, he has Middle Eastern, which is just generalized Middle Eastern. And uh, we did see with my results that we had a couple of uh, random things. I forgot exactly what they were, but they were random Middle Eastern readings. So that could be a connection between those two. So very interesting to see. He does have a Mizrahi Jewish reading, but less than what I have. He is getting that Italian reading, and then he's getting a little bit of a Middle Eastern reading. So not a whole lot different from Family Tree DNA. And now for my mom's results, she has a interesting mix. For my heritage, they have 93.5% Europe with a breakdown of 84.1% Ashkenazi Jewish, 7.2% Balkan, Eastern European. So actual Eastern European ancestry, not just Jews living in Eastern Europe. Then they also have South Europe, 2.2%. So they're picking up that Italian too, just like Family Tree DNA did, same as with my dad. And then here we have 5.5% Sephardic Jewish. So they are picking up on some of that Sephardic Jewish. Now, Family Tree DNA only had 2%. The way they defined it was less than 2%, so probably like one8 1.9 something to make them want to round up to two and here we have 5.5 percent so they're picking up a lot more Sephardi but then interestingly enough they're picking up one percent Mizrahi Jewish for my mom now if you remember I had six percent Mizrahi Jewish my dad had I think 2.8 percent and then my mom has one percent so that means that if my heritage is correct then they're saying that from my parents, there was a pool of uh, my dad having 2.8%, my mom having 1%, and yet somehow that's making up 6% of my DNA. So that means that I would have had to have received all of the Mizrahi Jewish from them, and then some. So to me, that's saying that with the Mizrahi Jewish population group on my heritage, there's something funky going on and they're probably going to need to do further research to get a much more, um, to, to get a better reading. I always like to say precise, but that's not a good word to use because we have the precision and recall rates, which are used to determine how accurate these results are in a sense. Um, so something funky kind of with that Mizrahi Jewish uh, the Sephardic Jewish, hard to tell if it's spot on or not. As I said with the DNA results at Family Tree DNA, it could be that it's not picking up on all of it, or it also could be that my mom just didn't inherit as much as we would expect in you know perfect inheritance because recombination is just so random. Now, for anyone who's watched a lot of my reaction videos, you're probably wondering, is he going to talk about genetic matches? Because that's one thing he always says in his reactions is I wish they would talk about their genetic matches. So I'm gonna talk about the genetic matches. So first we're gonna start out with family tree DNA. Now I'm not sure how it's gonna end up looking in the video because I want to block names out and I want to, you know, I want people to feel like their privacy hasn't been violated. Um, but I'm gonna go through some of this just to kind of show you some of the interesting stuff of what you can see. So we're gonna start out with my mom's uh, matches just because when you're looking for genetic matches, it's best to use your parents if they've tested. So for my mom results, she has 24,700 genetic matches. And using the family tree DNA system where I can connect them, so you can see how linked relationship right here had that blue box around it. Um, we I, I link all of the different people to how they're related so you can see the relationship range. This is what they guess it is. So basically based on the DNA, what they think it'll be, and then based on what I know, what it actually is. So using that system, we then get 742, which are through my mom's father, 
8,369, which are through my mom's mother, and then 208, which are both. So here we have the match list. We have the relationship range, then the actual relationship. So we have myself, my mom's son. We have my grandmother, my mom's mom. We have my sister. Then we have my cousins. And then we have more distant cousins. And you can see that I've connected with a lot of cousins on here, all the way out to fifth cousins. And you can see that the relationship ranges are not always correct, especially when you're dealing with Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry or just Jewish ancestry in general. So here we have a cousin who's estimated to be about a second to third cousin, but they're actually a fourth cousin. And we can see that there are a couple like that, second to third cousin, bases a fourth cousin. So this is the reason why I'm always saying I wish they would go through genetic matches is because people will talk about how well their admixtures are in comparison to what they think of their family. But the admixtures could be wrong. They could be right. They're not really for sure. But when it comes to genetic matches and people being a cousin of yours, if they match you on DNA, it, it's pretty spot on. Now, there are false positives. There are things that are, can be wrong about it. But this is where you get the real strength from these DNA tests. Now, the last thing that we're going to do, and hopefully this video is not super long, is we're going to look at my dad's DNA matches. And the reason for that is because we can see with my mom's side that she had a ton of matches where I had it linked exactly how they were related. For my dad's side, it's much, much less. Now, unfortunately, part of this is just because a lot of my dad's cousins haven't tested on family tree DNA or have not... Uh, uploaded their DNA results, although I've tried with a lot of them to do it. Um, but you still can find cousins. So here we have my dad's DNA results, and you can see here I am up at the top. Um, I hadn't marked my sister yet on here, um, even though she's on Family Tree DNA, so technically she should be in there too. Um, she is on the match list. But then the second cousin was once removed, these were actually people we didn't know were our cousins and then through the DNA and through the paper trail figured out how we were cousins. And I actually have a whole video all about how I figured out these two were cousins. I've done presentations about it, but you can really find a lot about your ancestry. And because I found these cousins, it brought me back a whole two generations on one branch of my family. Well, thank you so much for checking out this video. I really do hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger and become a patron on Patreon to see videos early and get extra access to all sorts of content. I'm the Genie Vlogger. I'll see you in my next video.